Elon Musk's Solar City brought a 21st century convenience to a remote Pacific island in American Samoa. Solar power and a battery storage microgrid have been built there, giving enough power to the island's 600 residents. Joining us now to break it down is Anthony Ha, senior writer at TechCrunch. Anthony, thanks for coming on here. So tell us a little bit about what's going on here. What did Solar City do? And why do you think Elon Musk chose to do it so far away, 4,000 miles off the West Coast, for just 600 people? Well, I think on, on some level, the reason he did it was because it was going to make such a big impact on their lives. As I understand it, um, this was an island where all their energy basically came from diesel before, which was delivered by, um, by ship. And so if there was a problem with the ships, they actually had to ration their energy. And so now, um, as I understand it, Solar City is providing nearly 100 percent of the energy for the island, and they don't have to worry about those outages and the rationing anymore. Do you have any sense for how long this took, how much money was spent, what was involved, what kind of investment are we looking at from a business point of view? Uh, I'm not sure about the, uh, the, the dollar size of the investment, but I believe it took about a year to install. Okay, and obviously it's so far away, we're having trouble figuring out if it's pronounced Tayu, Tai, it's T-A apostrophe U. It's that far away. This is not something that <laughs> might be ready for prime time here on the mainland. So I wonder, how does he get that technology from being so remote to actually being part of the mainstream here in the U.S.? Well, I mean, I think it's going to be um, a long process. Uh, just, you know, I, I saw that uh, I think solar power is less than 1% of the current uh, U.S. Uh, energy consumption. Um, so, you know, it's, it's a long road, but I think certainly part of that is this uh, just closed deal where Solar City is going to become part of Tesla. So they can use some of the resources and the relationships of the larger company to, um, you know, to, to sort of spread it, you know, both nationally and internationally. So obviously they're doing the merger. What's next for Solar City? What kind of impact is Musk trying to make on the world here. Uh, I mean, I think Elon Musk is a man who thinks very big. You see that with Tesla. You see that with Solar City. You see that with, you know, his idea for the Hyperloop, the, uh, the train, and, and some of his ideas for, for Mars. So I think gen genuinely he wants to turn this combined company into the provider of sustainable energy, you know, presumably first in the U.S. and then eventually all around the world. Um, and I think what you're going to see initially is just more joint products between Tesla and SolarCity. That's going to be the first step. So last week at the Tesla shareholder meeting, Musk talked about SolarCity's solar roof tiles. He said they would compete with traditional roof tiles. What's the difference here between these SolarCity tiles, traditional tiles, and the solar roofs that are already installed in thousands of homes? Um, well, I think, you know, a lot of these details are still emerging, but I mean, on just a per, like a, you know, on a cost level, from what I understand, you know, Tesla is claiming that this is going to be cheaper than having a regular roof and getting your electricity from the grid, and it's going to be both, you know, more environmentally sustainable and more affordable. And when I think about Elon Musk, Tesla, Solar City, whatever it is, so many of his projects, there's so much media attention on them, PR attention. They're good at getting a lot of buzz. Is it worth it? Are we, in a way, overexposing the company and his projects? Or do you think he's actually doing something that is so unique, that is so magical, that it warrants this kind of attention? Um, I think that it's worth it in the sense that it just draws attention to both these, you know, to these technologies, to electric cars, to solar power, and these are genuinely big companies that are putting a lot of product onto the market. Um, certainly, I think there's a risk that they sort of suck up all the oxygen in the room, and what would be kind of a bummer is if you know, attention didn't go to other solar companies. Solar City is, as I understand it, the largest provider of solar power in the United States, but that doesn't mean there aren't many other companies trying to do the same thing. Anthony Ha from TechCrunch, thanks for joining us. Everybody else, thanks for watching. I'm Eric Chemi. Have a great day. Hey there, thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.